So if I did everything right, technically this screen should come on when I turn the key on. Holy shit! Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm really excited. And you wanna know why I'm excited? Because I am right at the finish line on doing this EFI stuff, I think. We'll find out. We're hoping to fire it up tonight. Tanner's coming home from uh, this EFI laptop and we're gonna try and plug into this thing and see if we can get it running. The rat rod is a disaster right now. I've just been wiring, wiring, wiring a bunch. So let me kind of go over the setup here. <clears throat> what we got is this is a Speedmaster throttle body straight from uh, Summit. Then we have a Holly single plane intake with multi-port fuel injection. This is straight from Holly, very affordable, around 400 bucks. As far as ignition system goes, we have HyperSpark distributor, uh, HyperSpark coil, and HyperSpark CDI box. So that's what we have, or yeah, CDI box for uh, ignition. So that's what that entails. As far as sensors go for a small block Chevy with a Terminator X, well, let me just kind of explain what we got here. First off, I'm not gonna do these in any specific order or anything like that. We have fuel pressure sensor, we have oil pressure sensor, we have the intake air control sensor, we have the TPS sensor down here, you can't really barely see it, that's the coolant temp sensor. I have a map sensor back here, let's see if I can find it. I have a map sensor plugged into a hose right here that's plugged into the intake. I had to uh, repin this because the harness I got did not come with it. Obviously you got your injectors with the injector harness. I just got the Terminator X Universal Kit, so that's what I ended up using. What else? I think that's it as far as sensor goes. I do want to get a manifold uh, temp sensor in here eventually, but we don't quite have that yet. I am going to be running my inputs and outputs out to my fans to turn those on at a certain RPM not RPM, a certain temp. I know it's really weird that I did all this work and I didn't film any of it because I usually film all my work, but it just, to me, it wasn't, I don't know. I just, last time I made a wiring video, nobody watched it, and so I didn't want to waste a bunch of my time because it, filming while you're working on stuff, it, it doubles the time that it takes to do stuff. So wiring already takes a long time i kind of wanted to get this done what i wanted to do is kind of wire this whole thing and then talk about what i have for the setup and uh problem solve because i'm sure this isn't going to be perfect first try maybe it is who knows but uh i just kind of want to tell you guys how it goes and kind of walk you through what i have to do once this thing's already together holly does a really good job at showing installation videos so if I was to uh, steer anybody in the direction on how to, I would go towards Holly. They have a lot of good videos. If you have any questions for me directly, I'm gonna put my Instagram up here. Feel free, ask questions, ask away, because I, I may or may not have the answers, but I love talking cars with uh, everybody, especially when they watch my videos. So uh, go over there and always feel free to ask questions. Um, we're all car guys and we're all trying to learn this stuff together. But uh, Holly has explained it really well. So, so far I haven't had any questions. I'm gonna try and use the wizard to start this thing up. The wizard, if you don't know, is a handheld device. Here, I'll show you. We're, we're doing a video. I'll show you. All right, well, we're, we're in the wrap on. So you can see I have it just on a little phone device. So I'll pop it out here. So just a little handheld. And so you just kind of navigate through it. It's uh, it's kind of like the dashes for the higher end stuff, but a lot simpler and a lot less desirable. <laughs> it's gonna work, but it's not awesome. If you're ordering a Terminator that you're gonna wanna get, and it's kind of crazy that they don't send this with the kit, is this adapter harness. I will put the part number in the description below, but what this does is this plugs into your harness. This is your CAN bus and then gives you the USB to plug into your computer. Because if you don't have that, you can't use a regular computer to tune this thing, which is crazy. I can't believe they even offer this without this cord. But anyway, I'll offer this. And just so you know, this is the same plug 
that the handheld plugs into. So if you want to use both of them at the same time, then you got to get another wire loom. Also the part number for this and uh, a splitter so you can run the handheld and the laptop. It's crazy. Terminator is definitely a lot cheaper than like the Dominator or the HP, but there's still a lot of stuff that you got to get with it um, to make it work like you want. I'm running an AEM pump. It's a very uh, generic, I think it's just a Bosch pump, honestly, is because I've seen every single manufacturer has the same exact pump like this, but uh, I just happened to get mine from AEM. Obviously, I got all my shit box supply stuff, that filter, and I have a bunch of fittings that I'm gonna be putting together. I got all these shit box supply fittings. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff to, to plumb. I gotta get the fuel system finished up. What else? I gotta get the fuel system. I gotta do an oil change on this thing because I haven't changed it since we broke in the cam. You can see my O2 sensor right here. I put it before the turbo. A lot of people are like, Colin, why'd you put it before the turbo? Well, you see my exhaust right here. I can't, I can't run an O2 in here. It's not long enough. I need this to be longer because I'm gonna be getting normal air and it's gonna be thinking it's lean. So that's why I put it before the turbo. That's what we're gonna roll with for right now until uh, we change some stuff. But I think it should work fine for right now. All right, guys. So kind of brief overview. We got the uh, everything put together. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of start it for you guys. We did an oil change after breaking in the cam and washing down the cylinders, trying to get this thing to start with the fuel injection. So turn the key on. Get the fuel pump going. Terminator booting on. We got this. I'm gonna go and put monitor, uh, multi gauge. Uh, Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So let's see what All right, new day, work on the rat rod, guys. So we finished up doing the fill system on the rat rod and did the oil change, and we got it running. It runs really good, and I know I told you guys that the old, uh, I know I told you guys that the carburetor worked good, and it did, it, it ran pretty decent, but I have to tell you, the EFI runs way better. Uh, I'll show you some video here. I had dad helping tune on the rat rod. We had our computers hooked up on TeamViewer, so he was in Washington State and he was still helping me out tune in this thing. Kind of just took it through the RPM cycles. Uh, anywhere it had a little not smooth part, he kind of smoothed it out on Holly. Again, Holly makes it really easy to do that, but uh, he's been doing it with his truck for a long time, so it really made sense for him to kind of show me how it, how it goes. So I kind of feel confident that I'd be able to uh, learn it as well, but it was really nice to have his help. So. I would definitely say that EFI is the way to go. I, I do carburetors. I, I wanted to learn from the very bottom. That's kind of why I did the carburetors and, and it's cheap. If you're wanting to get into doing this stuff for cheap, get the carburetors. Don't just not do something because you can't get the best. Do what you can afford and enjoy yourself and have fun because then if you do get EFI or you ever do go hard down the line, you can really appreciate how good the stuff is because you actually have the older stuff that's not so great. I, I can't even tell you guys how much fun I had with that carburetor. As much as of a pain in the butt it was, I still had a blast. I gave people rides in the rat rod. It, it, was, it was a good time. Um, I don't want to look back now. I got the, I got the EFI now, so I want to, I want to go and uh, rally with the EFI. I think the EFI is going to be a huge game changer on this thing. Some updates that we have coming up. I have some disc brakes for the front, so it's pretty much converting a Volkswagen front end drum brake to disc brake. So I had the whole entire system of disc brakes that I'm gonna be putting on in the next video. 
We have a four nine inch coming. I'll show you a little sneak peek of the housing. I got the housing, uh, axles are shipped and now I'm just waiting on the third member. We also have brakes. We have, we have the uh, uh, new disc brakes on the rear. So this thing is gonna be disc brakes all the way around, four wheel disc brakes. It's gonna be a lot better than four wheel drum brakes. <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, I just wanted to kind of show you guys the Terminator setup on a small block Chevy with twin turbos and how I did it with the multi-port. A lot of people do the sniper, but with me, I kind of wanted to have more inputs and outputs and I didn't really want to use a sniper and I didn't really want to do the stealth because it was kind of expensive. This was kind of the all around budget-ish uh, way of doing a uh, really decent EFI setup. You guys are probably asking me, Colin, why are you using an old 6AL box from MSD? Well, let me tell you why. This, this is my brand new Sniper EFI Hyper Spark Ignition box. Little did I know, these are pretty much the exact same thing as an MSD box, so I don't know which one's cheaper, but whatever one's cheaper, get it, because all you gotta do is wire, wire it in. Now, onto why I can't use this box. So, I mounted this on the firewall, I got all my wiring over there, and I did all the wiring nice in the front of it. I put screws to kind of hold all the wiring together. So you're probably asking, Colin, why didn't it work? Well, let me tell you what I was doing. I had, I pulled the, the plug off of it with the pigtail, with the key on, I had power, my main power, I had ground, and then I had my key power. I had everything there. And still, this light would not turn on. I'm like, why is my light not turning on? Well, um, couldn't figure it out. So what I did is I undid all these bolts on the box all the way around. <clears throat> and once I went to go pull it off the firewall, uh, the box was, was still stuck to the firewall. I'm like, what the heck? Why is the box still stuck to the firewall? And uh, so, flip it over. I shot a self-tapping screw straight through this thing, through the circuit board inside this, uh, this box. Box is junk. So, that's how you destroy a $300 ignition box. I could have just not told you guys, but this is, uh, this is a learning lesson that if I can try and save somebody else some money, uh, let's do it. So anytime that you're using stuff on your car and if you're shooting screws through stuff, pay attention to where you're shooting them. Everybody's gonna be like, Colin, you don't use self tappers on builds. Well, I don't know if you guys have noticed this uh, build over yonder, but uh, she ain't no Lamborghini, if uh, you know what I mean. This whole entire thing is made with self tappers all the way around here. I, I do tons of stuff with self tappers. It just makes it easy to get into this, the metal. Every time I do them, I cut them off. Like you can see all these self tappers that pop out right here. This is all newly installed stuff. So what I'm gonna do, come over here with the die grinder, cut off all these uh, heads right here, smooth it out so there's no sharp edges and everything. But this is the one right here. I shot that one through, as you can see. And uh, And you can see it right there. It went right through the old box. So I had an old MSD box laying around. I had. So as you guys. <clears throat> I'm gonna, so I'm gonna show you where we put the, the ECU in here. The wiring kind of looks crazy, but it's actually not too bad. So this box is going to be Somewhere right here, I'm just gonna still mount that, but uh, I was just kind of setting it there after the whole ordeal. So the ECU is mounted right there. I do have rubber grommets between the ECU and the firewall. So that way this ECU is rubber mounted. It's not straight mounted. It's very important. You wanna make sure that's isolated. But we got our main harness right there popping out. Always gotta use rubber grommets for everything. Um, it's all, all decent. That's where I mounted the Terminator. The nice part of this handheld is it acts as a gauge and you can also uh, screen. It acts as a bunch of gauges and you can kind of read everything all in one spot. So when I turn that on, it'll turn on, it'll boot and everything. So I come in here, if I want a data log, I can data log right there. Uh, monitor, I can come in here and look at my gauges. I kind of like this, because you can come in here and see where the voltage is. Um, fans, coolant temp, 
usually has, the other one will have oil pressure. I like to find the one that has oil pressure, coolant temp, and my voltage, because voltage is kind of important. I think I either have a, I think I have a bad battery or a bad alternator, I'm not sure, but I've been having pretty low voltage. Uh, I've been barely just above 12. I kind of want to be in the uh, 13 range to be safe. But anyway, guys, just kind of wanted to show this to you. Um, shoot, we'll fire it up for a quick second. She was in gear. Oops. That's uh now it's in park. <laughs> Oops. I had the old broom leaning up against it. I had the broom come and hit me. I'm like, what is that? And I turn it off and I hear the old rear end. You know, because the awesome piece of junker in. Anyway, it runs pretty good. You saw that just Darling Key, pretty happy with it.